Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless first john 2 18 little children it is the last hour and as you have heard that the antichrist is coming even now many antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour this morning elon musk's ex is banned in brazil following a months-long feud with musk who refuses to back down on free speech rights our next guest warns the world is taking a giant leap towards totalitarianism. Journalist Michael Schellenberger is here to explain. So explain to us why this new form of totalitarianism, the censorship um, and sort of the complicity of the elites in this is more dangerous than the totalitarianism we've seen in the past. People have to understand that if you can, if the government can control and the ruling party can control all of the information that we're allowed to see, then there's no need for tanks and torture chambers. You know, the U.S. government under Biden and Harris have been funding censorship advocacy in Brazil. You know, the FBI went to Brazil to share information on how to censor. We saw in the Twitter files Brazil, the Brazilian government demanding that not only X, but every other social media platform ban sitting members of the Brazilian Senate, ban independent journalists, um, we now see in Brazil, the effective dictator of Brazil has frozen the bank accounts of a different company, Starlink, which in which Elon is also Elon Musk is also an investor. These are behaviors very similar to communist Cuba, um, other totalitarian regimes around the world. And our concern is given that they're coming uh, very shortly after the arrest of another social media CEO in in France last week. It appears that we're in the midst of a global totalitarian crackdown that we should all be very concerned could arrive here in the United States. Well, yeah, and if we're funding uh, the, the censorship in these countries, that's even more troubling. Um, I know Facebook has given right. in to the government demands, uh, and so he, Facebook, or, or Zuckerberg has, so Facebook and Instagram remain there, but Elon Musk is the holdout. I'm seeing censorship and totalitarianism, this tech totalitarianism breaking out all over the Western Hemisphere. What, is, what does this mean for America? What can we expect, particularly if this administration, um, Kamala, Kamala Harris, wins this coming election? She's part of the funding of the censorship in Brazil, for example. Well, it's even worse than that. You, it's important for people to know that Kamala Harris repeatedly called for banning Donald Trump. Yes. Not just from not just from Twitter, but from every other social media platform. And you look at what he's been tweeting today, directed at the whistleblower, um, directed at, at so many people. Uh, you know, I, I frankly think that based on this and all we've seen him do before, including ta attacking members of Congress, that he frankly should be, his Twitter account should be suspended. He is irresponsible with his words in a way that could result in harm to other people. And so the privilege of using those words in that way should probably be taken from him. Should probably be taken from him. Should probably be taken from him. He has lost his privileges and it should be taken down. And, and the bottom line is that you can't say that you have one rule for Facebook and you have a different rule for Twitter. The same rule has to apply, which is that there has to be a, 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 a responsibility that is placed on these social media sites to understand their power. You, I know you wrote to um, Twitter and the CEO, uh, Jack Dorsey, and asked him to take away the president's yeah. Twitter handle, his account. How is that not a violation of free speech? I mean, the president has the same rights that you have, that I have, and how would that not just be a slippery slope? I've heard that argument, but, but here's the thing, Jake. First of all, a, a corporation, which is what Twitter is, 
um, does not have the has obligations, and in this case, Twitter has terms of use policy, and their terms of use um, dictate who receives the privilege of speaking on that platform and who does not. And Donald Trump has clearly violated the terms of use, and there should be a consequence for that. And there should be a consequence for that. Her running mate, Tim Walz also said that there is no free speech guarantee for what he called misinformation, which is a completely subjective term. Misinformation is what you call speech that you don't agree with or that you don't think is right. I think we need to push back on this. There, there's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or, or hate speech, and especially around our democracy. So here you have the Democratic presidential candidate and her running mate both strongly calling for censorship um, not in foreign countries, but in the United States. And by the way, you know, when the Brazilian government seeks to ban politicians, when Kamala Harris seeks to ban politicians from social media, that's election interference. It's a yes. violation of the First Amendment. It's also an illegal interference in elections, which is absolutely prohibited under the U.S. Constitution and really yeah. every country's constitution. So I think that what we're seeing here is very serious, and Americans, even if you don't care about Brazil, you should worry that totalitarianism and censorship could arrive in the United States in a really big way in years to come. Oh, it's already here, Michael Schellenberger. Um, it's just going to metastasize if the wrong people are elected. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Meta, has finally admitted what many of us suspected all along. Senior Biden administration officials pressured him repeatedly to censor COVID-19 information posted on Facebook and Instagram. You couldn't discuss vaccine efficacy, masks, or ivermectin effectiveness in combating the virus. If you shared opinions counter the government narrative, you risk banishment from social media. I recently talked with legal scholar, GW Law Professor Jonathan Turley. He writes about Facebook censorship in his latest book, The Indispensable Right, Free Speech in an Age of Rage. I asked him if he thought the Biden administration pressure was illegal. He believes it was unconstitutional. Plays a critical role in what is an unprecedented alliance we have in this anti-free speech movement today of the government, corporations, the media, and academia. But Facebook was the big dog on the block. And for years, Zuckerberg and Facebook and Meta opposed efforts to release files on censorship. Uh, now, so Elon Musk has been attacked unrelentingly after he released the Twitter files that showed this massive censorship system. But Facebook fought it. Zuckerberg also said he regretted suppressing the Hunter Biden laptop story, admitting that reporting on it was not Russian disinformation. Two years ago, one poll showed 79% of American adults believed media censorship of the laptop story changed the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. Despite Zuckerberg's admissions, Facebook is still censoring conservative content. The latest victims are actor Dennis Quaid and their promoters of the new President Reagan movie. Facebook said it incorrectly rejected a handful of Reagan movie ads. But after that admission, the social media giant again rejected Reagan movie clips. Quaid, who portrays Ronald Reagan in the movie, said he was baffled by the Facebook response. It was uh, banned, and they haven't even seen the film. So <laughs> it seems like they don't want other people to see the film either, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we'll set up a screening for them any time and uh, we can see for themselves. Yeah, you know, the movie is about uh, America in the uh, in, in the 80s and Ronald Reagan, his life, and 
It's uh, about fighting communism. I guess a movie about Ronald Reagan is just too political for Facebook in an election year. Zuckerberg and his minions don't want you to see how a conservative president signed the biggest tax cut in U.S. history and took steps to bring down communism in the USSR and Eastern Europe. Folks, Ronald Reagan's successes aren't political. They're historic lessons that we must learn from and remember. In his farewell address to the nation in 1989, long before Facebook, President Reagan said freedom, including freedom of speech, is special and rare. It's fragile and needs protection. Folks, our nation cannot remain free if our speech is blocked and censored just because social media monitors disagree with what is said. Congress must do more to demand accountability from big tech companies like Facebook and government officials who pressure them for political advantage. American freedom begins with the First Amendment. If we fail to protect it, all our other freedoms will quickly fade away. Deception has been a problem for man since the serpent first deceived Eve in the garden, as we read in Genesis 3.13. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Jesus, when responding to the disciples' question about a second coming in the end of the age, warned them repeatedly about deception. He indicated that deception would be a serious problem in the last days and that many people would fall, as we read in Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, 24, and 25. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Deception is ever present, but the days are coming and have come when most people will be deceived. Deception will continue to increase until the day of the Lord and the return of Jesus Christ. When Christ returns, however, the one responsible for the deception will then be prevented from deceiving the nations again until the thousand years have ended, as we read in Revelation 23. He cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. After the thousand years are finished, Satan will join the false prophet and the Antichrist, as we read in Revelation 20.10. The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. After this, the Lord Jesus will establish his unending kingdom of perfection, as we read in Luke 1.32 and 33. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Jesus said this in John 8, 31 and 32, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Remember the restrictive measures enacted in Canada by Justin Trudeau during the COVID-19 pandemic? Police shuttered churches and arrested pastors for defying government health orders. Well, now opponents of a proposed law known as Bill C-367 contend the legislation would deprive Canadians of their right to religious freedom. Proponents of C-367 contend it is a response to anti-Semitism, while Christians say essentially those who share biblical views of sexuality or other matters publicly could face arrest for hate crimes. Here with more is Jeff King, president of International Christian Concern, ICC. Jeff, please explain what's happening in Canada. It seems well-intentioned, but you believe the law would pose a grave danger to religious freedom. It's absolutely true, it will. Uh, and it's not, these laws don't come about by accident. So this thing is advanced. There's been a whole series of bad laws passed previously uh, in Canada that, that uh, brought forward hate speech laws. Always a bad idea in democracy. It's always uh, a, a way to protect a special interest group and to actually attack uh, political opponents. Basically, the hate speech laws that were passed previously, the Christians were told to be, hey, calm down, everything's fine. Uh, there's protections for you in there. And those protections revolved around free speech and religious thought. And so basically, if, if the Bible says this, uh, if the Quran says this, and you're saying, you know, something based on that, you're protected. That's religious free speech. This bill, believe it or not, just like what's tried to pass in the United States, the Equality Act, this bill would dismantle those protections. It's a it's a monstrous step back for religious freedom. It's a dismantling of religious freedom in Canada. 
Well, we all want to protect people from hate crimes, whether they're LGBTQ, Jews, Muslims, Christians, but yeah. you believe this goes too far. It wasn't too long ago. Remember, the churches were ordered closed. Police arrested pastors like Tim Stevens in Calgary for keeping his church open during COVID. Truckers saw their bank accounts frozen when they yeah. staged a protest in Ottawa and the Ambassador Bridge. And then Catholic high school student, remember him, jo uh, Josh Alexander, he was expelled for sharing biblical views of transgenderism. So what do you believe is going on right now with freedom in Canada? I'll say it again, these laws don't come about by accident. They're not accidentally bad laws. Uh, they're typically dreamed up uh, you know, in, in the bowels of a political party. And it's it smells of banana republic. I'm telling you, these things are used to uh, to put knives into the hands of one political party to attack uh, their enemies. That's exactly what will happen. You're concerned about those political views drifting south of the border, right here to the USA. Most people would say, well, that's Canada. That couldn't possibly <laughs> happen in the United States. We have a constitutional guarantee of religious freedom here. So what are the yeah. chances similar laws could be implemented right here in the good old USA? Well, Gary, it's 100 percent because it's already it was already tried with the Equality Act under the Biden administration. Complete nightmare, the exact same strategy. Uh, and, and let me tell you how this goes. You know, I've been doing religious freedom around the world for 20 years, and so I'm familiar with every game that every Marxist dictator or despot uh, tries or, or Islamic radical tries. It's always this, the, the, out of one side of the mouth, the politician says, we have religious freedom in our country, oh, please. Uh, and those laws stand on the books, but they're ignored because on the other hand, on the other side of their mouth, what they say is, we have religious freedom, but that's for your own home. Get out of the public square. That's exactly what happens under Xi and China and Vietnam, all these places, the worst places for religious freedom, including North Korea. There's no place in the public square. You can think about your, your Christianity. You can practice it in your own home. Don't spread it. Don't share it. Everything will be fine. You see, we have religious freedom. Brothers and sisters, persecution is here. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well, as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is here. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time.
A flash of light brightens up skies over Kyiv as a barrage of Russian rockets and drones pound Ukraine's capital. Explosions seen early Monday sent plumes of smoke rising into the air and sirens resulted in residents rushing to shelters. The air raid started. We immediately went to the bomb shelter in the dormitory. Then explosions were heard. Everyone ran in and started screaming. We were very scared. The morning started with explosions. Her hands were shaking. We woke up to see that the apartment was full of smoke. But we must go to school anyway because we're Ukrainians. What are our warriors doing? According to Ukraine's air force, the majority of missiles and drones launched by Russia were intercepted. The latest strikes come a day after Moscow reported destroying dozens of missiles and drones by Ukraine over multiple locations, including Kursk. As Ukraine's incursion in the Russian region continues, its president is reiterating calls to lift restrictions on Western long-range weaponry to strike targets in Russia. Real peace, a real end to this war, is a multifaceted task. And in order to coerce Russia into peace, for them to move from dishonest rhetoric about talks to steps required to end the war, to rid our land from occupation and occupiers, we also need potent instruments. While Zelensky wants to strike legitimate military targets deep in Russia, across the border in the city of Belgorod, officials announced kindergartens will be shut this week and schools will be moved online after claiming a childcare facility was targeted by Kyiv on Monday. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Pressure is mounting on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and that pressure is both at home and abroad. And this is after Hamas murdered six hostages over the weekend. Massive protests in Israel called on the government to do all it can to, to free the remaining hostages. Well, meanwhile, thousands attended a service for slain American-Israeli hostage Hirsch Goldberg Poland. Thousands of Israelis streamed to Hirsch's funeral in grief and disbelief that he's now gone. Hirsch's mother, Rachel Goldberg Pauline, said, she and her family were convinced her son would come home alive. For 23 years, I was privileged to have the most stunning honor to be Hirsch's mama. I'll take it and say thank you. I just wish it had been for longer. Hirsch's father also shared his grief, but a hope as well. For 330 days, mama and I sought the proverbial stone that we could turn over to save you. Maybe. Just maybe, your death is the stone, the fuel that will bring home the remaining 101 hostages. Hirsch and five other Israelis were murdered as Israeli soldiers were getting closer to freeing them. Hamas began releasing last messages of the six murdered hostages and suggested they will kill hostages Israel tries to rescue by force. Monday, President Biden blamed Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for not doing enough to get a ceasefire deal to free the remaining hostages. Mr. President, if you think it's time for Prime Minister Netanyahu to do more on this issue, do you think he's doing enough? No. Netanyahu apologized to the families of the hostages that the rescue mission didn't succeed. I told the families, and I repeat again tonight, I ask you for your forgiveness that we were not able to bring them back alive. We were close, but we didn't succeed. But strongly criticized President Biden for his remarks. They murdered six of our hostages in cold blood. So after this horrible murder, I don't believe that someone serious would come and say, now make more concessions. You're not serious. Hamas is serious. I can't believe this happened. The deaths of the hostages sparked massive countrywide protests over the 11-month saga and calls for the government to do more to bring them home. Strikes called to force a hostage deal largely fizzled Monday, and a court ruled them illegal.
Many demonstrators are angry Israel won't agree to a ceasefire that frees the hostages, no matter the cost. The time has come to stand and to wake up, to do everything for the hostages to come back alive. Others who turned out to support the government say those protests are helping Hamas and harm Israel. The thing that they are doing now is destroying the unity of the people of Israel. It's like justice has been turned on its head. Here Hamas murdered all six of them. And they did it because the IDF was close. They were close to setting them free. But they were murdered in a tunnel. And then you have calls for the government of Israel to do even more to achieve a ceasefire. That means releasing more terrorists who are currently in jail in Israel. That means giving uh, guarantees to Sinwar that uh, the IDF will, will not kill him that he will bodily be saved and, and will be able to leave Gaza. It means that Hamas will stay in control of Gaza. All of that is, in my view, completely unacceptable. Now, here's a question for our own President Biden. You've got U.S. citizens in captivity in Gaza. One of the six who was murdered, U.S. citizen. And you're going to say, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is not doing enough. I challenge you, what are you doing to set the U.S. captives free? As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Now to two U.S. servicemen attacked on the street of Turkey, an anti an apparent anti-American incident that was caught on camera. More than a dozen people are under arrest. It was a shocking incident captured on tape. U.S. Marines in civilian clothes on a port call in Turkey, a NATO ally attacked by a group of nationalists, the mob placing what looked like a bag over the head of one of the young Marines, while another Marine jumped in to help and was assaulted as well. All the while, the attacker yelling in English, Yankee, go home, over and over. Local police and some other Marines nearby quickly intervened, and the group of attackers was arrested. The Marines were not injured, but taken to the hospital as a precaution, then returned to the ship. The USS Wasp arrived in port on Sunday after taking part in training exercises with Turkish forces. The nationalist group said the attack was carried out in defense of Palestinians. Luke. 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Charged with conspiracy, falsifying documents, and usurping powers, Venezuela's main opposition figure, the country's elected president in the eyes of many, is now a wanted man, to the delight of self-proclaimed president Nicolas Maduro. This cowardly man, Gonzalo Zarutia, he doesn't recognize the law. He recognizes nothing. In hiding since the presidential elections of late July, which he and his supporters believe he won, authorities requested the warrant after he ignored three summonses to answer prosecutors' questions. Tally sheets of votes produced automatically by polling machines were not published by the National Electoral Council as they usually would be, as the body claimed it had been subject to a hack, but they nevertheless proclaimed the incumbent victorious. Since, Maduro's camp have ignored pressure to publish their copies of the tally sheets, a move that drew mass protests and international condemnation. While the opposition obtained and published sheets from 80% of machines, which showed their candidate some distance ahead of the incumbent. Edmundo Gonzalez became candidate for the presidency after main opposition leader Maria Corina Machado was deemed ineligible by a court ruling and the second choice was prevented from registering. 
Machado was quick to condemn the new arrest warrant. Maduro has lost all touch with reality. The arrest warrant issued by the regime to threaten President-elect Edmundo González crosses a new line that only strengthens the resolve of our movement. Venezuelans and democracies around the world are more united than ever in our quest for freedom. Long-time tensions between the U.S. and Venezuela took a strange turn yesterday when the U.S. seized a plane used by Venezuela's leader, Nicolas Maduro, and then flew that plane to Florida. It comes as Maduro's government is cracking down on opposition leaders after the recent disputed election there. This aircraft is essentially Venezuela's version of Air Force One. Maduro has been using it on state visits worldwide. Now, this seizure comes as the country is still reeling for, from their disputed elections earlier in the year, and U.S. officials hope it sends a strong message to the Maduro regime. In a statement, the Venezuelan government denounced the seizure, calling the move a recidivist criminal practice. These measures that the U.S. government is taking are part and parcel of what we're likely to see more and more. Florida International University professor Eduardo Gamara is an expert on Latin America. He says the U.S. is looking to pressure the regime following July's disputed elections. Maduro claimed victory, but the U.S. and other countries have said Maduro tampered with the results. This is now a, you know, a full, blatant dictatorship. They're not in any mood to, to negotiate. To the investigation into a deadly train shooting in Chicago. Police say four people were killed and a suspect was tracked down through surveillance video and taken into custody. Still a lot of unanswered questions here, but this terrifying ordeal comes after a string of violent incidents on Chicago's public transportation system. Now, authorities say in all, four people were shot and killed about 5.30 a.m. Monday on one of the city's elevated commuter trains. The victims who were on a Blue Line train in Forest Park were sleeping when they were shot shot, according to authorities. Using surveillance videos, investigators say they tracked the suspect who had jumped to a different train line and arrested him. A firearm was also recovered. The victims have not yet been identified. Now, as of August 27th, police say 627 violent crimes were reported on the CTA compared to 547 the same period last year. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Scientists studying the new MPOX strain that has spread out of the Democratic Republic of Congo say the virus is changing faster than expected, and it's often happening in areas where experts do not have the funding or equipment to properly track the virus. Reuters spoke to half a dozen scientists in Africa, Europe, and the U.S. who outlined a number of unknowns. Dr. Dimie Agoina is an infectious diseases expert in Nigeria who chairs the World Health Organization's MPOX Emergency Committee. We don't have uh, the required knowledge about MPOX. MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox, is a viral infection that causes pus-filled lesions and flu-like symptoms. Symptoms. Cases are usually mild, but they can be deadly. The virus has been around in Africa for decades, but an international surge in 2022 prompted the WHO to declare a global health emergency for about 10 months. Now there's a new strain and a new WHO emergency declaration. The situation constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. The UN agency says Congo has had more than 600 MPOX deaths this year and more than 18,000 suspected cases of the new strain and its earlier iteration. There have been cases in four other African countries, as well as in Sweden and Thailand, among people who had traveled to Africa. Scientists say a response is complicated by several outbreaks happening at once. In some cases, the spread has been linked to human contact with infected animals. It can also spread through close contact with an infected person. Mutated versions of the virus can essentially be considered a sexually transmitted disease. An Africa CDC senior official said on Wednesday that the continent has secured less than 10 percent of an estimated $245 million needed to fight the surging outbreak. And there's no timeline yet on when hundreds of thousands of vaccine doses might reach the DRC. 
Some people in Rancho Palos Verdes, a city south of Los Angeles, have been told they may need to evacuate due to a landslide crisis. Now, what that means is there's a town outside of a major American city where the power had to be shut off to more than 200 homes over the weekend because dramatic shifting of land has made it too dangerous to power those homes. That shifting could cause damage to electrical equipment and cause fires. Um, we have a loft upstairs. 81-year-old Sally Reeves has lived in this house in Rancho Palos Verdes for 42 years. Uh, the stairway was coming away from the wall. For more than six months, she's watched almost every room in her home fall apart as landslides worsen in her community. This is what it did to our bedroom. So this was where a bed would normally be. Our bed was right here. <laughs> and this is the cracking from this landslide. Yes. She's lived in this broken home while taking care of her disabled husband. And you can see where the house has literally been ripped yeah. apart right down the middle. Now the power company, Southern California Edison, has cut the Reeves and hundreds of their neighbors' electricity for an unknown amount of time. Hey, man, what we're hearing right now is the generator because the power was turned yes. off on Sunday. Yes. She refuses to leave and is now living in the garage. Underneath these seaside homes, a large complex of landslides started moving faster after historic rains pummeled the area. This is what some residents have been dealing with for more than a year. You have road closures everywhere. You have the sewer line that has been brought up. In some areas, the ground has shifted nearly four feet in just a month. Not everyone can afford to retrofit, repair, or move. Finding prospective buyers or even homeowners insurance is nearly impossible. Everybody must assume that people who live in Rancho Palos Verdes are infinitely wealthy. That's not the case, especially for me. And so I literally don't know where I'm going. City officials are now requesting an emergency declaration from the state. The acceleration that's happening currently is beyond what any of us uh, could have foretold, and it demands more response from the state, more response from the federal government. In the book of Job, chapter 37, 5 through 13, we learn that God controls the weather. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. The beast going to dens, and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds, he scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Correction is the Hebrew word, Shabbat, which means, literally, a stick for punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, etc. Job 37.13 can be translated like this. He causes it to come, whether for punishment, or for his land, or for mercy. God controls the weather for three reasons. For punishment, for his land, or for mercy. The extreme weather we have been witnessing is clearly punishment. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is 
Accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.